Okay, this is a video to show you how to do the calculations for the heat of fusion of ice lab, just sort of walking you through an example. So here's some example data that I made up. I'm going to follow the calculations and we're going to put the answers on the calculations table for trial one. And we'll walk you through it as we go. You're going to do calculations for all four trials and uh, keep track of your significant figures. Okay, so calculation one says calculate the volume of water that came from the melted ice. So clearly I started with 100 mils of warm water and then afterwards I have 112.3 so it's pretty obvious that I subtract these and that'll be what came from the melted ice. So 12.3 mils. is what came from the melted ice. Calculation two says, determine the mass of water that came from the melted ice. Assuming the density of water is one gram per milliliter, that's a good assumption. One and two are the same, except one says volume and two says mass. But because the density of water is one gram per milliliter, they're gonna be the same number. And this is a good thing to know about water. If you have 12.3 milliliters, you have 12.3 grams. Now we need this in grams because our Q equations use mass, not volume. Question three says calculate the change in temperature. So clearly you're just going to subtract your two temperatures. So I'm going to do 48.7 minus 36.5. And 12.2 is my temperature change for this example. Gosh, I wish these weren't so similar. That's just a coincidence. Okay. Number four says determine the mass of original warm water, assuming the density of water is one gram per milliliter. Now, if you're following your directions, your volume of warm water for all four trials should be 100.0 milliliters. So, of course, that's 100.0 grams. Okay, now we're to calculation five, energy released by warm water. Here it is, calculate the energy released by the warm water, which will be Q. Now the water cools down in temperature, so of course I'm going to use Q equals MCAT because that's the heat equation with the temperature change. And we're going to make sure everything I put in here is for the warm water because that's what they ask me for in calculation five. Now, leave some room so you can do this setup four times. You do have four trials, but here's me doing the first trial. I don't know Q. That's clearly what I'm looking for. Be careful here. The M is the mass of the warm water. Mass of warm water, 100.0 grams. C is the specific heat capacity of water. 4.18 and delta T is the change in temperature. For this trial it's 12.2. Now don't keep doing this over and over again. These two numbers will be the same for your other trials but the change in temperature will be different for every trial so you'll have to calculate this for every trial. Okay, multiplying. Okay. Of course, I'm going to keep three sig figs because 12.2 and 4.18 have three sig figs. So I get, this is not very easy to round, 5099.6, this is really tough to round to three sig figs. It's almost impossible to do without putting into scientific notation. So actually, I'm not going to worry about this yet because the heat of fusion is what I really want. So I'm just going to write this for now. But I need to keep three sig figs in mind for the heat of fusion. The heat of fusion is the point in the lab, so that's the one that really needs to be rounded properly, and the percent error will be rounded properly. So here we go. Calculate the energy release per gram of ice, also known as the heat of fusion. This is the whole point of the lab. Now, the heat of fusion of ice also known as solid water, is 334. So isn't that the answer? No, don't use 334. 
We are pretending we don't know that it's 334, and you're going to calculate it from your data. If you're really good, you'll get a number close to 334 here. But of course, we're still going to use this equation, Q equals MHF, because we're talking about melting, we're talking about fusion. So Q equals MHF. Now, I just said, pretend that you don't know the heat of fusion is 334. So that is your X. The mass, which mass do you use? You're going to use the mass of melted ice, 12.3 grams in this example. Don't put 100 grams here. OK? It's the mass of the ice because the ice is the thing doing fusion. Now, how much heat did it take to melt this? This heat is this heat. The heat that left the warm water went into the ice to melt it. It's the same heat. That's why we did the whole MCAT equation up here, is to find the heat and put it here and make that heat melt the ice. Uh, 5099.6, even though I know I really should be limited to three sig figs. This is in joules, of course. So I'm going to do that guy divided by 12.3, and I'll find my heat of fusion. OK. Now I'm getting 414.6, but I am going to round to just three sig figs. I'm going to write 415. Now, is that close to the right answer of 334? Hmm. The accepted value for the heat of fusion of ice is found on table B. It's 334. What is the percent error of your answer? You have an equation for percent error. Measured value minus accepted value divided by accepted value times 100. If this is negative, just make it positive. In fact, I like to put absolute value signs on that to really drive that point home. So I'm going to do my answer minus the 334. Then I'm going to divide by 334. Then I'm going to times 100 because it's a percent. And I'll see how far away from the right answer I was as a percentage. My math here looks like this. And I'm getting, rounded to three sig figs, a 24.3% error. I'm only 24% wrong. OK, so there's an example of how to do all these calculations. And go ahead and try this with your numbers.